Hello everybody, today I'm going to show you how to light a fire with the flint and steel the indigenous Taiwanese way. So a little bit of background on this. So in Taiwan the flint and steel was used both by the Han and the indigenous people and originally the flint and steel was typically used through the time period between once they came in contact with the people like the Dutch and the Han and up to the point where they started getting matches from people like the Japanese. Now I know the name for the flint and steel in two different languages, that's Baiwan and Amis. Now the Baiwan call the flint and steel Tsekis and the Amis call the flint and steel Fafoane. So in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you all the materials you need like your flint and steel kit, what rocks to use, uh, what tinders to use, and then I'm also going to be showing you the actual technique and how to light a fire with it. So stay tuned. Okay so the first thing we're going to be going over in our kit is the piece of steel. So what the indigenous Taiwanese use is a rectangular or ovular piece of steel, and this has to be a piece of hardened high carbon steel, otherwise it won't be able to throw sparks very well. Now how I made this steel striker in particular, I actually just took the middle section of a file, broke it off on both ends, and then I chucked it into a fire and waited for it to heat up red hot and put in some oil to harden it. Alright, now the second thing we need in our kit is a rock we can actually throw the sparks with. And this has to meet two qualifications. The first qualification is that the rock has to be hard enough, so around a 7 or 8 in the most scale, so it can actually knock steel off of your striker, and we'll go over what rocks are like this in just a second. And then the second qualification it has to meet is it either has to have a sharp edge, or it has to have an abrasive surface on it. Okay, now we're going to be going over a couple of different rocks that you can get sparks with, particularly those that are found in Taiwan and have been used by the indigenous Taiwanese. So we'll start off on this side. We've got this sort of schist type of material that's got just a little bit of quartz in it. Now this isn't super optimal, but it is usable and people have used it to get sparks. Now these don't have a whole bunch of quartz in them, but they have just enough that you can get a spark here or there. Moving on, we've got this one right here. This is a piece of quartzite. You can also use just straight crystals of quartz. Now this is something that the Amis would often use because this is found pretty commonly in the rivers around the east coast of Taiwan. Okay, now moving on to the next one that's more commonly found throughout Taiwan but less commonly used for flint and steel, that is agate. Now this is very smooth grained and kind of transparent and it's often found around the rivers of Taiwan but usually it's just made into beads instead of used for things like flint and steel. Now the next thing we've got right here is chert, and you are able to find this around rivers and in the mountain ranges of Taiwan. And finally the last rock we've got right here, and probably one of the best ones to use for flint and steel, is, well, flint. Now flint is actually a type of chert, but the way it forms it tends to be a lot smoother, and when it breaks it tends to be a lot sharper than other cherts. So this makes it actually pretty optimal for use in flint and steel. Now there were very very many indigenous Taiwanese tribes that used flint for their flint and steels. There have been artifacts found all the way down in Zhuzhen in Tainan from the Siraya, and all the way up in Nanto from the Dayan. Alright, so I've got three different tinders that the indigenous Taiwanese use for their flint and steels, and I'll go through each of them one by one. Alright, we'll start off on this side right here, so let me just quickly open up this tinder tube and show you what's inside. So we got this nice and fluffy seed pod kind of stuff, and what this is, or rather what it's supposed to be mimicking, is the seeds of the kapok tree. What I'm actually using right here though, because I'm in Canada instead of Taiwan, is actually the seeds of the cottonwood tree, which is the closest thing I could find to the seeds of the kapok. Now this stuff is really nice, soft, and fluffy, and it can be found all over Taiwan, but especially in the west coast of Taiwan, around Tainan, and the Siraya have a name for this. This is actually called Buru in the Siraya language. Now the next one right here isn't actually very commonly used for lighting fires. What it is, is actually the wick for a matchlock gun. Now back in the day, people would usually light their matchlocks with the flint and steel, so that's why I've got this here. Now moving on to the last one that I have right here, let me just open up the tube and push it out. This is punk wood. It's what's used frequently by the Amis tribe, and in the Amis language they call this munahi. Now what punk wood is, is pretty much wood that's dried up and has started to rot, so it's this really soft, sort of styrofoamy consistency, and it actually takes sparks very well. 
Now for materials like punk wood, it is somewhat hard to catch a spark on these parts that are uncharred, and that's why I usually have the tops of these charred like this, so then you can get an ember in there a lot easier. Now there is another tinder that I don't actually have here because I couldn't find an analogous material for it, and this material is particularly used by the Baiwan over in southern Taiwan, and they call this galailod. It's this sort of plant that when dried up becomes this really soft and fluffy material that catches the spark really well and makes a little ember. I'll link a Taiwanese indigenous television video that shows this material in use right here, or you can look in the description below if you want to see it. And with that, we've got all the materials we're going to need for our flint and steel, so let's get on to some technique. Alright, now before you're going to be able to get your fire and embers and all that, you're going to have to be able to make a few sparks first. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your striker and put it into your dominant hand. You're going to hold it with however many fingers on uh, one side and then with just your thumb on the other. And then in your other hand, your non-dominant hand, you're going to take your rock, whatever you're using, flint, quartz, chert, and you're going to hold that, if it's small like this, generally just with one or two fingers and a thumb on the top side. But if it's larger, you can just take your whole hand however you want. So if you're using a rock with a sharp edge on it to strike, what you're going to be doing is trying to scrape the edge of that striker against that sharp edge right there. So what this is doing is sending little bits of steel off of your steel striker, and those will rapidly oxidize, making little sparks. Now if you're using a rock that's more so just an abrasive edge, you can just pretty much do it wherever that's a bit rough. Now with that, we're ready to get ourselves a couple of embers. So I'll show you how to get an ember with each of these tinders I have. So we'll start off with a matchlock, just in case you guys need to be able to light your gun. So with this, you can either place your wick either above or below the rock. It really just depends on the geometry of the rock, which one you should do. I find with this rock, it works better for the top. So we'll do it right there. And we're just going to strike it a few times and hope a spark lines right into that black area. And there we go. Got that little piece lit right there, and that'll eventually spread to all the little strands. Now from here, if you've got yourself a matchlock gun, you can put this in and use it as your match, but I don't have that, and I don't want to do that, so for this, I've got this piece of bamboo. I could just put it in and suffocate it of oxygen to put it out. And it's out. The next one right here we've got is the punk wood, and I actually forgot to mention earlier that these containers are supposed to be very similar to my little tinder tube right here for the burut, where they usually wrap consecutive rattan rings around it to strengthen it. So what we do here, it's in that container right there, and you can see it's open on this side, so we're just going to push that up like a little bit of lipstick. Again, you can put your wood either above or below the piece of rock. This one, again, I just feel it works better with the top. Come on. This focus is terrible. There we go. Really quick right there. Let's see if we can get that to focus. Come on. There we go. Got that lit right there, so all we do with this, we take our tinder bundle, just kind of poke them together and blow on it until there's enough little bits of uh, fire inside of that tinder bundle to start lighting it up. Now the very nice thing with the Amis way of doing this, with the Wunahi, is you can just take it out, put it through the other end so that it's inside that tube right there. Now this thing burns really, really well and will smolder for a super long time, and if you don't want to waste the whole thing, just cap it off right there, and it'll go out. Alright, so for the final tinder right here, the buru, I'm actually going to bring this all the way up to a flame. So let's get started. I'm going to open that up, grab me a little stick right here, and take a little bit out. Now we don't want too much of this, just enough to give us a sizable ember to start off our tinder. This is quite fluffy, so you're going to grab a little bit more than what you want. Close that up. 
from there, you got a little piece like that. You're going to roll that up, make it a little bit dense. You don't want to make it too dense because you still want a bit of air in there. And then, same thing as before, above or below your rock. But this time, with the buru, I find that it's actually best to put it right at the edge. So, you just get that there. All right, there we go. We got it on the edge right there. So, now before we get started on this, I will want to mention that because this is so fine, it'll often catch tiny little pieces, and you'll have these tiny little pieces of orange sort of trailing through it. Now, not always will these pieces actually catch into the center of it and make an ember, so you're just kind of going to want to keep striking until one of them starts just sustaining itself. There we go, we got one right there. So from there, we're going to put that into our bamboo tinder. If you want to see how to make this, go check out the video right here I did on the bamboo fire saw, because I'm not gonna do it again here. But we'll put that into the bamboo tinder bundle, nestle it right in there. Start blowing on it a little bit. Wave it back and forth, give it some oxygen. for a bit. There's our fire! And so that is how to start a fire with the indigenous Taiwanese flint and steel. Thank you for watching! So if you like this video on the indigenous Taiwanese flint and steel, please leave a like down below. And if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to my channel. But otherwise, I've also got a new playlist going now that is on the indigenous Taiwanese fire lighting methods. So you'll see that right around here-ish. But otherwise, thanks again for watching and goodbye.